picture is related to the motion of the particles. Okay, this is an animation by a pet. If you're going to increase the heat, so I want you to observe the motion of the particles. Okay, they are moving very fast. Okay, what is temperature? Temperature is considered to be a quantity that tells how hot, warm, or how cold an object is with respect to a standard. It is also related to the random motion of the molecules in a substance. And take note also that it's proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecular translational motion. When we say translational motion, that is the linear movement of the molecules. Because uh, some mole molecules are also vibrating. So here, uh, we are going to relate temperature, or temperature is related to the translational motion of the molecules. We have different scales. We have Kelvin scale, Celsius scale, and Fahrenheit scale. Okay, the thermo thermometric scales, they are divided into two. We have the direct temperature scales, the Celsius scale, and the Fahrenheit scale. We also have this, what we call the absolute temperature scales, the Kelvin scale, and the Rankine scale. For Kelvin scale, when we say absolute zero, when we say zero Kelvin, that means that the molecules do not move anymore. They no longer have motion. Unlike for zero degree Celsius, it is zero, but it doesn't mean that they are no longer in motion because molecules can vibrate in that particular temperature. So we have different scales. As I have mentioned, we have Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. The boiling point for Celsius is 100 degrees Celsius. Its counterpart in Fahrenheit is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. For Kelvin, it's 373.15 Kelvin. For the freezing point, at degrees Celsius, we have 0 degrees Celsius, equivalent to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And in Kelvin, it's equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin. Now, Kelvin scale is named after British physicist Lord Kelvin, wherein zero is assigned to be the absolute zero, it, or it is the lowest possible temperature, and that is equivalent to negative 273 degrees Celsius. For Celsius scale, it is named after Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius, wherein zero is assigned as the freezing point, and 100 is degrees Celsius, the boiling point. For Fahrenheit scale, it is named after the German physicist Fahrenheit, wherein 32 is assigned as the freezing point, and then 212 is assigned as the boiling point. Uh, temperature or a thermom thermometer actually, uh, it acts like a um, speedometer because it measures the speed of the object or it measures the speed of the molecules. It provides a measure of the amount of the average kinetic energy possessed by the particles. Take note, it's related to the average kinetic energy. Then we have here the conversions for degrees Celsius equals Kelvin. If you're given Kelvin, we have Kelvin minus 273.15. That will give you degrees Celsius. Then if you wanted to have Kelvin given degrees Celsius, you just have to add 273.15. Then for degrees Celsius, or from degree Fahrenheit, if we want it to convert to degree Celsius, we can have degree Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. Or we can also use the 9 fifth or 5 9. For example here, degree Fahrenheit equals 9 over 5th times degree Celsius plus 32. Yung kabila naman, we have Degree Celsius equals degree Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 over 9. Okay, I'll show you sample problems later for converting um, temperature. Okay, now let's talk about heat. Heat is considered or it's defined as a transfer of energy from a higher temperature object to a lower temperature. Heat is considered to be a transit energy, so it's being transferred from an object with a higher temperature to an object with a lower temperature. For example, if you have a coffee, since the coffee is 
has a higher temperature than the surroundings, so the heat is transferred from the coffee to the surroundings. How about aircon? If, for example, you're inside a room, you're inside an air-conditioned room, so malamig, pero outside, mainit. Kaya commonly, sinasabi nila, isara nyo yung pinto, lalabas ang lamig. Okay, that is not correct, but it should be, isara nyo yung pinto because papasok ang init. Because the energy is, yun nga, it is a transit energy from a higher temperature to lower temperature. So in case you are in a room which is colder, the outside it has a higher temperature, so papasok yung init. So ayan, tandaan niyo po yan ha. The heat is not the same as the internal energy because internal energy is considered to be the grand total of all energies inside the substance, including heat or the thermal energy. Heat is not something that the object has, but heat is transferred from one object to another. What is thermal equilibrium? For example, we have body A and body B. They are in different temperatures. Then, they were in contact with each other. At some point, they will reach thermal equilibrium. So, that means they will have or they will reach the same temperature. Let's say B is colder than A. So, A will release heat and will be absorbed by B until their temperatures are the same. Okay, here is another example of heat transfer. As I have mentioned, hot coffee to colder surroundings. But if you have cold drink, let's say iced coffee, so it's from the surroundings, the warmer surrounding, to the cold coffee. Now, next topic that we will discuss is about thermal expansion. Now, why do objects expand when they are heated? If you can see these joints or if you have observed this, why are there thermal joints or expansion joints in the roads? Bakit kailangan may gaps? Okay, this is to allow for thermal expansion. When the temperature of a substance is increased, molecules, they have a tendency to move faster because I, has, I have mentioned it is related to the average translational kinetic energy of the molecules. So as the temperature increases, the molecules will be moving faster and then they will tend to move further from one another. Thus, there will be an expansion of the substance. Take note also that expansion of liquids is greater than expansion of solids. How does the thermometer work? Okay, it's actually an expansion of liquid. Okay, there. So we have mercury. This is a um, classic example of thermometer or a classic thermometer. We have a mercury thermometer wherein the mercury expands. It expands more, of course, than the container or the, than the glass container. Okay, linear expansion is described by this equation wherein we have delta L changed in the length equals alpha L0 delta T, wherein alpha is the coefficient, coefficient of linear expansion, L0 is the initial length of the material, and then delta T is the change in temperature. For the change in temperature, you can express it in degrees Celsius or Kelvin because they are the same. They are just the same. Then we have delta V. For the volume expansion, we have delta V or change in the volume equals beta V naught delta T, where in beta is the coefficient of volume expansion. V naught is the initial volume of the material. And then delta T is the change in temperature. Uh, we will solve sample problems later. You, you can see in the module also the different coefficients of linear expansion and volume expansion. And then we will also be solving problems later. For the unit, just be consistent with the unit. For example, the initial unit, initial length is expressed in centimeter. You can also express the final length as centimeter. Because... The coefficient of linear exp expansion is expressed in per Kelvin or per Celsius degree. So it will not affect the unit for 
the volume or the unit for the length. So you can retain the unit. For example, this one, uh, we will be solving sample problems. Okay, now let's take a look at how the temperature is related to the motion of the particles. Okay, this is an animation by FET. If you're going to increase the heat, so I want you to observe the motion of the particles. Okay, they are moving very fast. Okay, they move faster and faster as you increase the temperature. That's why, as I have mentioned, temperature is related to the average kinetic energy of the translational motion of the molecules. So, as you, therefore, they will expand. As you cool them down, let's try to cool them. So, the motion now, they are becoming slower. And let's see what will happen. As you can see, they will contract when they are cooled. So as you lower the temperature, the molecules uh, move slower and they will also contract. Okay, now let's take a look at water molecules. So let's heat it up. What do you expect to happen? They will expand, they will be moving faster. Okay, so you can see they expand, it expanded. And then when you try to cool it down, what do you think will happen to the molecules? So we are expecting that they will move slowly and then they will also compress. Okay, as you cool cool them down, the water molecules will be or will contract first and then cooling it further, it will then again expand. Okay, as you can see. Now I want you to look for the explanation for that. So water has a different property. When you cool it down, it will contract until it reaches 4 degrees Celsius and then cooling it further up to freezing it it will expand. Take note that water is densest at 4 degrees Celsius. So it has its lowest volume at 4 degrees Celsius.